gents. Welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel and the journey to be the fittest dad on earth. We are barely kicking, but we're still alive after that amazing 60 mile ultra bike race in the beautiful badlands of North Dakota on the world renowned Madahe Trail. And the outpour of support, likes, comments, subscribes, views, telling your mother, your brother, your sister, your cousin for that premiere of the Madahe race was outrageous and very unexpected. So thank you guys from the bottoms of our heart. And in that video, we talked about what is the next crazy, stupid shit that I'm going to do to try to be one more rung up the ladder of the best version of myself. And that is High Rocks Dallas, November 23rd. If you don't know what High Rocks is, we gave a detailed response last video, but it does a great job of blending endurance and strength. And that is my middle name. That is my cup of tea. So we are going to show you guys exactly what our workouts are for a whole week of prep for High Rocks Dallas. As a strength and conditioning coach, I know how to reverse engineer and make sure that there's no guessing when we get to High Rocks. We know what our fitness level is gonna be. We know our performance. We know what we're great at. We know what we're bad at so that we can really make a splash in any division that we're in. So you guys are gonna see what does a week's worth of training look like? We're gonna go over that here in a second. How do we structure training for high rocks from a strength coach with a decade in the game? You will see nutrition, supplementation, hydration, everything that we do so that we have the best chance of giving it our all come November 23rd in Dallas. And if you missed last time as well, this is our goal. Our goal is to be in the best shape and best performance possible so we can put our best foot forward. But I have been attempting to be a BPN athlete for about three years now. And due to the select group of people and the high level of athlete that they have in their group, I have not been able to do so. However, Nick Bear himself is competing at the same exact event that I am at. So no better way to get on his radar than compete. And that is the objective because this is right up my alley. So let's go look at what a week's worth of training, nutrition, supplementation, hydration, and just being a dad looks like to be the best version of ourselves come November 23rd in Dallas for High Rocks. Today's a great day to have a great day. So here's the exact training model on a weekly basis for our high rocks prep as we lead into November 23rd. And then we're gonna get into some training so you can see exactly what it looks like. For me specifically, strength training is my cup of tea. I've done it for 15 years straight. So endurance is my weaker point. So if you look at the whole weekly model, there is more endurance training and circuit training than there is strength training because I already have that foundation. So on a Monday today, we are hitting strength training, an anaerobic conditioning circuit, and then regular trunk training, which is abs training for anybody else. Tuesdays, easy runs with a high rock circuit, usually split up half the run before, half the run after, so that we can work really well on fatigued legs. Wednesdays, easy run, high rock circuit, and arm training. Thursdays, our regular strength training day with anaerobic conditioning circuits. Fridays, easy run, half of it before, half of it after with our high rock circuit and trunk training. Saturday is our off day with mobility and arm training. And then Sundays are our long, easy runs. Unlike marathon prep, what I was used to for the last four or five months, we were hitting two a days running in the morning, strength training in the evenings. With this High Rocks model, it's much more condensed, but much more intense. We're not on the road for as long because the most you're gonna be running is about six and a half miles or eight kilometers for this whole event. So we look at our weaknesses, which more so is endurance compared to the strength side for me specifically. And we look at our strengths and then we're really going to dial those in on a weekly basis. This is exactly what we're doing from now, which is, August 19th till November 23rd. This is our High Rocks prep. So let's get to training and you'll come along with us today. The thing I freaking love about this High Rocks training model and this prep is the combination of the strength side and the endurance side. A lot of the strength stuff is all I do on a daily basis. Sled pushes, carries, rowing, ski erg, lunging, 
wall balls I don't do as much, but it's more of a CrossFit-esque movement pattern, but a lot of overhead pressing is in my repertoire every single week. So it does such a great job of combining the two most opposite end of the spectrum training modalities in one event that absolutely crushes your soul. For anybody that doesn't know, getting sub one hour is an absolute crushing, whoa, crushing of a workout. That is the elite of the elite getting sub one hour. We don't even know where we're gonna be, but we're gonna try to get as close as we can to an hour, hour and five, hour and 10 minutes. So let's get to training here. Uh, today's a doozy of strength work and trunk training. Let's go. So how has my supplementation changed from our straight endurance races into our high rocks training block? And the answer is zero because consistency, number one is the key and number two, is only taking the supplements that your body needs based off of blood work. This is something that I think everybody makes mistakes at. Why are we taking supplements that we do not need for sure based off of our blood work? If we can get our blood work done, we see the micro macronutrients that we need, whether that's protein on the macro side or vitamin D3 on the micro side, whatever it is, how can we base our supplementation intake off of our blood work, not the Joe Schmo that says you should take this because it boosts your testosterone and he has legs like a pencil and arms like Arnold. Take the shit that you need and this is the shit I need and the reason why it hasn't changed from endurance to high rocks because it's what my body is lacking. So first off and the most important for me is our vitamin D. This is 10,000 IUs with K2 for better absorption here. Then we got our fish oils, high, high dose fish oil, taking four capsules, great for the joints and everything, but I take it because of how many concussions that I've had. Then we go into our magnesium daily supplement here, followed by our joint supplement from Nutridyne there. And then we get into our dandelion extract to rip off any extra water that we have. I do good enough job of it sweating, but this really helps us lean out uh, when we're carrying extra water. And then this is our liver supplement to really pay attention to the liver levels from my blood work. So I didn't know I needed to take these, but now I do because of blood work. It is the key to your health and the key to your success. Don't do it just once. Get a log of blood work so you can see when things change and exactly what you need. So besides protein, that is exactly the stack we will be taking from now until November 23rd, unless something drastically changes. On protein, we do a little bit of a variation. But this is where we're at right now. Our brownie from Echo Vision. Honestly, the best pricing for protein for the quantity that you're getting and the taste is absolutely insane. So this is what we're hitting right now for our protein intake as well. Today, right now, here is the training that we have for the week. We're first gonna hit our run warm up and then we get into some movement prep, some pull off presses, some jump squats, get the explosion of the joints and also the activation of the trunk, followed by seven sets of four on back squat at 78%, five sets of five at 80% on strict press, and four sets of four at 60% on deadlift. Then it's followed by our anaerobic conditioning. Okay, we have 30 cal skis, nine deadlifts, 20 cal ski, seven deadlifts, 10 cal ski, five deadlifts, making sure it's heavy enough weight to push us. Today's gonna be a doozy, let's get it. All right, set two of seven at 315 for four reps. The, the actual goal of this is just speed, nasty speed. I have not back squatted for six months. Prior to the marathon, prior to our bike preps, I have not back squatted, just giving it a little bit of a rest, doing front rack split squats, doing Bulgarians, and my back squat has not suffered. It's still moving fast, it still feels good. It's just dusting the cobwebs off, set two. big thing that I always tell my athletes that I also try to follow in my training is repeat ability. Okay. We are on now set five, but the first three should look like the last three. The first set should look like the last set. We need posture, position, execution, speed, and velocity and violence. Anytime we are doing this, that's what we need. And that's what you have to do to replicate high end velocity in any of your lifts. Same thing goes for sprints. Same thing goes for deadlifts. 
repeatability, making sure it looks set one, looks like set seven. This is set five. We are done with squats, we are on to strict press, and then we are on to deadlift. But the one thing that I love about being in the coaching industry and getting different perspectives, because there's a million ways to skin the cat, is if you wanna be better at something, you can reach out to people that have done it, that have had success, that have coached it, that have done it. And that's why I reached out to one of the High Rocks current champions, and he coaches the women's current champion. The biggest difference from what I am used to training myself, I've wrote my own programming for 10 years, is not doing supersets, okay? Just focusing on the primal movement and the primal movement by itself so you can really push the intensity. Today we did seven sets of squats. Today we're doing five sets of press and five sets of pulls. That's a lot of volume, number one, but a lot of volume and intensity, allowing myself to get higher intensities for more volume, really pushing the envelope. What I'm getting at, is even if you're a strength coach, even if you think that you have it all figured out, which I do not, hire a coach and you will open up a whole different doorway that you've never thought was possible in your training. Queasy girl, you're cute. You're cute. All right, strength work is done. Now we are on to our anaerobic circuit. What we have, 30 cows on the rower. I don't have my skier, it has ordered, but it's not here yet. 30 cows on the rower, nine deadlifts. 30 cows on the rower, seven deadlifts. 30 cows on the rower, six deadlifts, four time. We're gonna burn it down because I only have six, seven minutes until my athletes get here. Let's go. Missed it when I clicked it. So 420.76. But I finished a second before that. Holy shit. That sucked. That sucked ass. 30 cows, nine deadlifts. 20 cows, seven deadlifts. 10 cows, five deadlifts. Oh shit. Sage, come here. Hi, sweet girl. I miss your sister, Cora Girl. Doesn't mean you're not cute. Did you go say hi? Is there really anything better than dogs? I don't think so. I'm gonna hold you. You're a weirdo. Can I have a kiss? Thank you. All right, so for this video and this vlog, it is specifically what we're doing for training, supplementation, and nutrition for High Rocks. 
not giving you all the behind the scenes and all the other stuff like we do on our regular ones. We're straight to the shit. Training, nutrition, supplementation. So what are we eating getting ready for High Rocks Dallas, November 23rd? Here we go. All right, when it comes to nutrition, simple is better and whole foods is the easy, consistent way to get to any goal you want. You wanna gain weight, eat more whole foods. You wanna maintain weight, eat a little bit of whole foods. You wanna lose weight, eat a lot less of whole foods, but cut out the shit. You wanna get shredded, you wanna have great health markers, you wanna have great performance, just cut out the shit. The best piece of advice I've ever been given and that I give to others, do not eat anything in a box. This potato wasn't in a box. This elk steak wasn't in a box. Eat everything and get rid of everything else in a box. So here's what we're eating, getting ready for High Rocks 2024. Keeping it super simple. We have a good size elk backstrap, just a couple extra pieces of elk there, and a large potato. Butter, salt, pepper, we're ready to rock and roll. This is leftovers from last night. I shot this elk last year and it is absolutely amazing. This is what we're having. The rest of the day we had protein mac and cheese, we had yogurt, we had all these things hitting our protein goal and filling up with whole foods. That is High Rocks 2024. This will be what makes me a force to be reckoned with. Full dinner and the full macro breakdown for you guys so you can see exactly how I track, exactly how I eat, exactly how we fuel performance. So we have our elk steak, we have our potato, sugar-free barbecue sauce, cottage cheese and honey, and homegrown Colorado peaches. Here is the exact macros for the whole deal here on screen. 1,557 calories, followed with 82.5 grams of protein, 90 grams of carbs, and 94.1 grams of fat. This is how we feel the performance. We're trying to get upwards of 250 grams of protein a day, which is a struggle, but you have to, have to, if you want to feel your performance. This is a normal dinner for me during the week, during the weekend, and then we got a diet DP, baby, because you know the drill. This is how you fuel performance. You will see the rest of the workouts this week and the rest of the nutrition tomorrow. I am such a fudge and idiot. Forgot to record, we are already eight minutes into our High Rocks PFT. That is our first physical test to see exactly where we're at, where our strengths are, and definitely where our weaknesses are. This is exactly what we got. We're eight minutes in. I'm trying to break 30 minutes. So this is what we got. Thousand meter bike, anything that is running, we're subbing for the bike for 10 more days until my stem cells are ready to rock and roll. 50 burpee broad jumps. Just finished those. 100 lunges, I'm halfway in between those. So I got all these done. I have 50 more. 1,000 meter row, 30 push-ups, and 100 wall balls with the 20 pounder. It's been brutal, we're eight minutes in, but it's gonna be a good one. Now you're coming along with me because I'm a fudge an idiot. Fittest dad on earth. When doing anything you need to be toes forward it's the best way to produce and reduce force when you're doing this kind of shit 80 reps in it is more advantageous to have a toes out position in a wall ball allows for easier range of motion you may not produce as much force but easier range of motion means quicker reps quicker reps means quicker finish quicker finish means i become a bpn athlete because i compete with nick bear 20 left i'm gonna fucking grip and rip them Call it 2240. Took me about five seconds to get over there. I can't even hold. I can't. We finished it. The only sub we had to make because our doctor said so for 10 more days is the 1,000 meter run was a three quarter mile bike ride. So I tried to get close to like three minutes where I think I'm gonna be on the 1,000 meters. So I don't think it changed the time to be honest, and my quads were much more dead than when I ran. So everything else was the same. We did RX weights, we did heavier on most things. 
and uh, we finished in 22.45. The awesome thing about being a white belt though, besides marathon prep, long, long runs, you don't get this endorphin feeling. You don't get this rush. You don't get this enjoyment. And don't get me wrong, I love running, but this is different when you absolutely burn it down, when you give everything you have and you still know you suck. It's a beautiful feeling that you can improve upon. About 14, 15 weeks out, a lot of good shit can happen in that amount of time. We're getting ready for high rocks, baby. Again, our goal, compete with Nick Bear so I can become a beat athlete. That's the, that's the deal, fittest dad on earth. You'll see us tomorrow for our next high rocks workout. We got Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We'll see you then, peeps. I'm gonna get some food. Peace. Ladies and gents, welcome to Wednesday, August 21st. I forgot to start the camera again at the start of this. So we are four minutes into a 16 minute EMOM, and then we have a second 16 minute EMOM. I think my coach is trying to kill me. Usually we have a hard day, strength day, hard day, strength day. We got two hard days in a row. This is exactly what we got. Warm up, five rounds, 60 second row, 60 second bike. Straight into the first 16 second EMOM. 15 cal bike, because we don't have our skier yet. 15 dumbbell snatches, 15 cal row, 15 cal bike. Two minutes rest, down to our next 16 minute EMOM, 15 cal bike. 10 burpee broad jumps, 15 cal row, 13 cal bike, 20 minute cool down on the assault bike. I truly think he's trying to kill us, but this whole process of being a white belt and getting into different things, I've done this shit before, but have I put 100% of my energy and 100% of my focus and 100% of everything I wanna do? Probably not. That's why we're doing it. That's why we hired a coach and that's why we're gonna crush High Rocks Dallas. You're gonna come with us for the next 12 minutes of this EMOM and the next 16 minutes of the next one. Let's go. If you guys don't know what EMOM is, every minute on the minute. If this takes me 15 seconds, I have 45 seconds of rest. If it takes me 45 seconds, I got 15 seconds of rest. So that's the first EMOM. We're done there. We got two minutes rest. Another 16 minute EMOM. Bike, Rob jump, cal, or row, and bike. Let's get it. Shit. That last EMOM it was brutal. Two 16 minute EMOMs. All I got left is the 20 minute cool down. We'll hit that after our last athletes. High rocks ain't no joke. And that's why I love it. That's why I love training for this stuff. I was never this tired running a marathon. You gonna see what we have for dinner tonight. And then Thursdays and Fridays workout, baby. Fittest out on earth, taking on High Rocks Dallas. <laughs> Out. All right, it is Thursday, August 22nd, and I finally remembered to start recording before we start the workout. This is our strength workout for the day. We have warm up, five rounds, 60 seconds bike, 60 seconds row. Then we get into our prep stuff, pull off and jump squats, uh, great activation and getting the tendons ready for any dynamic movements. Back squats, three by three by three at max. Okay, so we go 70, 80, 90%. Then we go straight to towel pull-ups, five sets of five. Then we get into deadlifts, three by three by three by max at 70, 80, and 90%. 
and then we do our sled pushes. Eight by 13 meters as fast as we can with very short intervals of rest on the backside. So as we talked about, as this prep matures and we go down the road, my coach knows that my strength is strength training. My weakness as compared to my strength training is the running, is the cardiovascular work. So we are having three to four days of high rock circuits with two to three days of strength training instead of the reverse. Things are wild. It is good to have a little bit of break and do strength training today with a little bit of sled. And then we are on to Friday with a brutal high rock circuit. I'm saying so I don't know if I'm speaking loud quiet whatever we got three by three by max on our deadlift 70% 80% 90% perspectively respectively feeling a little dead today so we're gonna just get what we can out of it I need more so I'm not even close to 100% yet I'm only 12 days out from my stem cell injection so things are still moving there, things are still sore. They take out this fat tissue and you bruise like a mother trucker. So this kind of hurts, deadlifts aren't great. But you find me somebody that's 50% of their capacity, maybe even 100% that moves 365 this fast. So I've been staying super consistent with exactly what my coach is programming on everything. Because I've asked myself before, like, when was the last time I fully 100% without any distraction committed to something? And it was marathon prep, but there was days that I couldn't do what I wanted to do. So I've decided to 100% commit to all of his programming, set my bias away, set my nine years of experience aside, set my opinions aside and do what he has programmed. Except for one thing, he's doing towel pull-ups and so it was three sets of five. So we decided to do five sets of five, six, seven, eight, nine. So add a rep every time. This is number eight, so set four. Eight 13 meter sled sprints. last day of week two of High Rocks Prep. Today is Friday, the 23rd of August, and you have seen Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday's workout, and I really think that the coach is trying to unalive me because this is a brutal, brutal training session. But that's exactly what we need, that's exactly what we have to do to get ready for November 23rd in Dallas. So as we talked about a little bit yesterday, my cup of tea is strength. I've been doing it for 15 years, like I, I'm, I'm great at that. My aerobic side is my weakness in comparison to my strength side. So we have been really ramping it up and today we have one. Saturday, we also have our long run. So we are really going to hammer that home and that's going to help bring that body weight down from where I am at now to where I wanna be at about 205, 200. So you're gonna come along with us. I have remembered again to start recording before we started training. So here's the workout for today, let's go. 
All right, the camera's about to die, so we're gonna get after it. Warm up, we have a one and a half mile run, straight to 800 meters at threshold. Everything I can handle, 200 meters slow walk, rest two minutes, five rounds. 400 meters at threshold, 100 meter jog, rest two minutes, four rounds. 200 meters at mile pace, rest 60 seconds, four rounds, and then a 1.5 mile run to cool down. This shit is gnarly, and there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's what we signed up for. So we just finished our 800s, five rounds of them, took our two minute rest. Now we're on to four 400s with a 100 meter jog rest. However long that takes, we're already two down of four, and then we're gonna move on to our 200s, and then our cool down. Come along with us, this shit's brutal. The quad pump from the salt bike is outrageous. Also, I'm not stupid. I know how exciting it is to watch somebody pedal fucking fast on a bike. So uh, we're not gonna get every single one, but you best believe your sweet ass that I'm getting five 800s, four 400s, four 200s, and three mile cooldown. You bet your sweet ass. So as you're gonna see, we're done with our eights, we're done with our fours, we're onto our 200 meters. You're gonna see that definite change in pace. We need to be at threshold at an eight, we need to be at threshold at four, and we need to be at threshold at two. So it's going quick. I was within, I was within five seconds of getting to my 200 meters, but I don't know when it's about to switch, I can just guess. Just right before it, just quit, quit, quit. Your brain just tells you to fucking quit every time. 7.7 .7 miles. 32 minutes. Now we have our 1.5 mile cooldown. We're gonna do incline walking. You get a mile cooldown. Call it a day. So that is the end of week two of our High Rocks prep, getting ready for November 23rd in Dallas. If you guys liked this type of content, if you liked this type of format, please leave us a like and a specific comment about if you liked it and if that's what you want to see more of. We are putting everything we can into giving you guys a behind the scenes look on what is the day by day of somebody that is trying to be the fittest dad on earth, somebody that's trying to be uncomfortable every day, somebody that is trying to be a white belt. This stuff is fun as shit. And if you guys support it and tell me what you want, I am somebody that will tailor it to you, okay? so. I appreciate you guys sticking that back to the end. I appreciate you guys supporting this journey. We will see you next week for High Rocks Prep episode number two. We'll see you on the other side. Fittest dad on earth.